Good afternoon to each and every one of you. Praise God we can come back together once more. Uh, God's been so good. He has brought me through a lot of things from last week. So praise God for that. He's always on the throne. He's always here to hear. Uh, he's always there to hear your prayer. Um, before we go get into the message tonight, let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick and just pray for pray for those lost souls. Pray for the ones that are on your heart right now. I don't know why. I, you know, usually I'll say we got a, got a lot to pray for, but I tell you what, pray for the ones that are laid on your heart by God, because there is a reason that that one person is on your mind. There is a reason why God has laid somebody there, or someone pops in your mind just out of the blue, so pray for them. As we go to the Lord in prayer, and do remember our church family, do remember all the churches and and uh, the the ones God, uh, the ones that are just uh, persecuted in this day and time. Let us all be faithful and come unto God as one into another. So, uh, before we go into this, let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise your precious name, God, once more, God, for what you've done for us, Lord God, what you've done for me, God. Lord, you've made ways, God, Father, when my eyes thought that the doors were shut, Father, but Lord God, it was my eyes shut. And I praise you and I thank you, Lord God, for opening them and showing me the things, God, that you've seen, Father, and you've shown, Father, in many ways, God, that I can never even begin to thank you or praise you enough. I ask God in each and every way, God, you touch the people that, that are on these one's heart, Father, Lord God, that are a church family, Lord God. Father, the things, Lord God, that are coming on this last day in time, Father, but I praise you and I thank you, God, for just being there, God, in each and every way. Lord God, that you've got us and you've directed us, Father. I know, God, that there are troubles and temptation and, and trials, but, Father, Lord God, that you do not tempt us of, Lord, but, Father, that we get pulled away from our own lust, Father. The things, Lord God, that may catch our eye, God, but, Father, you are there, Father, that we can reach back out to, Father. And I pray, God, that we do that, God. I pray, God, that we stay, Father, in your grace and your mercy, God, that we walk with you, God, in each and every way. As God in each and every way, Father, you touch the churches across the land. Touch the ones, God, that are uh, the preachers, the pastors. Lord God, touch each and every one, God, that your word would go out and go forth, Lord. You know the ones, God, that are hurting in our church, God. You know the ones, God, that are in, of need, Father. The the prayer chains, the, the ones, God, that people are asking, Father, for prayer, God. And I pray, God, that you anoint them just as you see fit, God, because it is the best, God, that we could ever get, Father, it is to be forever in the center of your will. I ask you, God, in each and every way, you guide me, God, tonight, Father, and put me aside, Father. Lord God, as your word, God, goes forth, and I pray pray, God, that you just touch Pastor Sister Mary Jane, Father, anoint them, Father, with that forever anointing, Father, Lord God, that he have been before. I ask you, God, to keep us safe, anoint us, and help us come back unto that house of God, Father. No matter where, Father, we come into you, Father, I pray, God, that your spirit is forever present, and, Lord God, the gospel is preached in those areas, Lord. In Christ's name I do pray. Amen. So tonight, we'll be in first off in Romans chapter 8 and will also be in first Corinthians chapter 3 also God is uh God's laid Corinthians first Corinthians on my heart to study for a while here lately and I guess this was a a last minute thing God says well why don't you just time together <laughs> you never thought about that before but God is so good that we can get if we can get in that place that we just hear him and it's shown by him you just be able to see just how good his grace and his mercy is so in romans chapter 8 and verse 1 i know that this has been talked about for a long time and i understand that uh that it has but praise god anyway we're we're all in this sorry I had a couple of technical difficulties there so praise God let's go to chapter 8 and verse 1 in Romans and it says therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and I know you guys know you all know these things but just listen to we when we get on down into verse 13 and uh 11 through 13 just just listen but i want to cover the whole thing real quick 
For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, uh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sin, uh, sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So praise God, our righteousness comes from Jesus Christ right there. That's a point-blank answer. For they, in verse 5 it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And you know, I'm, I'm not trying to go over what Pastor has said, but just think about that old sycamore tree. That if we are after Christ, We'll climb to Christ. Think about that. In verse 6, For the carnal minded is death. And praise God for that sermon Sunday. And I tell you what, I am, that, that touched my heart all the way down to my toes and back up to the last hair on my head. So thank God for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that can show pastor these things, that can show these men and women that we can get to that place that we abide in God's grace and God's mercy. Let's keep going here. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because of the carnal mind is the enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Point blank. If we don't have Jesus Christ, and we do not have that Spirit that we receive when we allow Jesus Christ to come in, that Holy Ghost, he says, we're not of his. We are not a child of God. Let's keep going here. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raises up, raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. Now listen here. This is solely for the church. And I truly believe, I truly believe God gave me this solely for the church. And I know this is going to be on YouTube. I know it's going to be on everywhere. But this is for the church. Listen to me tonight. This is for the, the men and the women that are have given it all to Christ and understand what the law of the Spirit actually is. And understand and believe fully that Jesus Christ come into their heart, saved their soul, and gave it all on Calvary and shed His blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. He shed every bit of His blood for me and you. And rose again on the third day. And praise God, the tomb couldn't hold Him. This is for God's church. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now you're seeing a lot of they. You're seeing a lot. It's plural. It's not singular. As in... There's multiple people. There's not just one single person here that he's talking about here. And I'm not talking about, I'm talking there is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. Do not get that confused. I'm not talking about that there's multiple ways. There's one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ, and that is it, is your way to get to God. In verse 14 it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are adopted into His grace. He come and said, I desire you 
So we're in his family. Think about that. Think about that we are in his family. And in verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you, and I understand what this says, but we are going here first. If you've got the Holy Ghost in you and you have that spirit that you have asked and allowed to come into you and to work in your life as a gift, the Holy Ghost, you will understand that when you walk through that door, I may have even said this the last Wednesday I talked. I'm not sure, but we're going to do it again. When you walk through that door, if somebody walks through that door, God will show you who they are. Are they a man of God? Or if it's a woman, are they a woman of God? That's the only two options there you're getting. God will absolutely show you who these people are. They have that spirit. Like it says, it, um, the spirit itself beareth witness. My spirit will bear witness with their spirit. Their spirit will bear witness with my spirit, knowing that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I've met people on the fly just as quick as all I could say is to shake his hand or shake her hand. And... Days later, I'll come back and I'll actually get to talk to him maybe uh, at where I work. And I knew one guy. I said, there's something about that feller. And I said, I believe he knows God. I believe he knows what he's done. Well, later on, I got to get to talk to the feller. And praise God, he knows him. He knows him real good. That's what I'm talking about. We have brothers and sisters out there. And we have to come in agreement with each other. We are in the last days that if we don't come together and we don't see these things. You know, the last time, and I, Lord willing, if unless he just takes it away from me to say, we've got to get to that point and stay at that point that we say, Lord Jesus, if so, come quickly. And there's another step to that. We've got to keep stepping toward that. We've got to keep getting there. And that is to come together. If if one person, if Bob don't know that you're saved, and if, if Bob don't can't see that you do give your life to Christ, are we being that witness? Are we doing what we need to do with our brothers and sisters in Christ? Let's keep on before I keep meddling through the whole thing. In verse 16 again, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we may we suffer with him, that we may also me we may we may be also glorified together. Together. There it is again. There's some more unity coming in there. For I reckon that the sufferings of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the joy which shall be revealed in us. I'm going to give you a little background story before we go on into Corinthians. They ain't much that went right last week. I'm going to be honest with you in my neck of the woods. But... I'm going to give you this real quick. A lot of things led up to other things, and it didn't matter which way you turn left or right, walk straight ahead. It was just all falling apart, right to the left, right to the right, right straight ahead of you. You didn't know which way to turn. You didn't know which way to go. And even though that I was praying through the whole thing, and even though, we, I, even though that Mom was praying through the whole thing, that she was in the same boat I was, it took us climbing that sycamore tree together, coming in agreement together with one another, and coming straight to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. It took us to get to that point to understand God's got this boat. God can calm the storm because you know what? Jesus slept through that storm. And they, they went and woke him up down there. And when they shook him and woke him up, he he wasn't scared. He wasn't afraid. He, there was no fear to him. 
But praise God, it took a, uni a unifying way to come together with the people that's around you. Then you'll understand. Then you'll see God's a mighty God. And His love follows more than just one. Now, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not Mr. Smiley, if you understand what I'm getting at. But, God wants us to love and unify together. God wants us to come together. So that each step that you climb on that sycamore tree, and the higher you get, the more you see of Christ. The more you get of Christ, the more that you get dunked straight up to Christ. And I'll be honest with you, this was not in the picture. I'm going to be flat out honest with you. I did not believe, I didn't think this would go there. But the further you get together and the more that you come together as a church, as a, as a community, and follow Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about following these worldly things. I'm talking about following Jesus Christ as unifying in Him, as a brother and a sister. Because you'll see later on down in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that we need that. And how much it actually will do for us. So let's go on here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Give you just a second to turn there real quick. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envy, envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? What are we looking at today? We're looking at two branches that make a Y instead of coming back together. That the leaves don't touch no more. That the leaves don't stay in touch no more. That they grow opposite of each other. Think about that. For a while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. It's the end. God is, is it. That is, the end of that sentence is all. God is all. He gave the increase. That is what makes things grow. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. You know, in the Bible it tells us he can raise up rocks to do what we should be doing. Believe it now. You see this now. So neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now, I'm not trying to put you so low that a submarine can't even go over top of you or underneath you. I'm not trying to get that low in the water. The only thing I'm saying is, if we don't follow Christ, if we don't follow the right directions, don't be King Kong and beating your chest. We need to stay humble. And by staying humble, that you can use each other and one another to get through these things that we are facing on this life. Because God will give the increase if you are faithful enough to follow Him. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Think about that. Here we go. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor, his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So I'm not going to say exactly what. I know I'm going to have to draw to a close here real quick. 
I'm not going to say who uses this, but there is a company out there that when you go into an interview, you have all of these behavioral questions and, you know, you could fly straight out great things in a, in a technical interview and in a, uh, in an interview that you have to tell them about a time that you've had a conflict or something to that effect. But there's a company out there that puts Lego sets in front of you. I want you to think about this. They put Lego sets in front of you and they give you a team of four people. You have to work together, not necessarily to build that whole Lego. Are you seeing what I'm saying, church? They, Those four people have to come together to build this whatever it is. Maybe it's a train. Maybe it's a... It's a car or something to that effect, but they have, they have to put these Legos together. You don't have to complete that car, that train. It doesn't have to be a rolling model by the time you're done in the amount of time that is given. What needs to be done is you need to have a foundation of the people that are around you. And that foundation needs to center on one thing. It is the job. And that job being in this instance of those four people is we need to center ourselves around Christ. That little Lego set, that train, those things that I'm talking about today, that is Christ that we have to center ourselves around. When we come together and we find, Lord, how can I be of a help to you today? Lord, how can I unify myself, one, with my brother, with my sister, and be able to get that person that is lost back into the fold. I talked about the the last Wednesday that I talked is praying for these people and getting down on our knees and being able to say, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Come get your church. Come get us as a church. It goes for the same thing. We need to be able to say that. But don't you want to have one more person in there? Don't you want to be able to complete that role? Like I said, the train doesn't have to be completely built. But you need to have a focus on Jesus Christ. You need to have a foundation of what that is. Let's keep going here. In verse 10 it says, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. Praise God, he's already laid that foundation. That is why we have to focus on Jesus Christ as the foundation. And another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. As we're going to close tonight, I want to say one more thing about them working on that model. The grade that they get for working on that model is how well they come in unity. If one says and picks up that model and jerks it over here and starts working on it totally by itself, he doesn't pass the interview. If there's one that takes a captain's lead and helps unify the others together, such as a pastor, and keeps them together and helps them work in unity, he passes that's what I'm talking about tonight, church. We've got to come together. And when we come together, our foundation of coming together is Jesus Christ. There may be a lot of things we may not agree with on, the, on this earth. I may not be able to work with any of you. And you may not. you may absolutely, terribly despise working with me. But there's one thing we have to make common ground. And that is, I've allowed and let and asked and clenched on to Jesus Christ coming into my heart. And you have too. 
let us come in unity of those of that right there. If nothing else, that is what is going to bring us together even further. It's going to bring more people into our church and into our communities that understand what's going on. Because just as it says, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Is your work Jesus Christ tonight? Is your work after Jesus Christ? Is that what the foundation of your building blocks are? Is that the foundation of your Legos? I love each and every one of you tonight. I pray that you all have a very, very blessed week. And I just pray God to send that precious hedge of protection. And I pray that each and every one of you, when you read it or when you listen to this, that you can lay your head down at night. And say, Lord, and you desire to say, and desire to pray earnestly, Lord Jesus, come quickly.